present Arthur John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Mum's Army, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests, Larry Martin, Carmen Silvera, Molly Sugden, and Wendy Richard. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. As the war continues, more and more men are volunteering or being called up for active service. Those ineligible, for one reason or another, continue to join Britain's Home Guard units, which go from strength to strength. At Walmington-on-Sea, Captain Mannering is seriously considering letting the female members of the local population also join his unit. Don't stand at ease. Now, pay attention, men. Before we dismiss, I have an important announcement to make. During the last week, Sergeant Wilson and I have been approached by several ladies. Permission to speak, sir? Yes, what is it, Jim? I just want you to know, sir, that I'm sure you can rely on the men's discretion, sir. <laughs> We're all men of the world. Oh, don't be ridiculous. I'm referring to our local women folk. Oh, sorry, sir. I see, sir. The good ladies of Warmington-on-Sea wish to offer us their services. That's funny. It's usually the bad ones that do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll ignore that remark, Walker. The fact is, these gallant ladies wish to join us in our fight against the common foe. Sergeant Wilson and I think this might be a good scheme. Don't be, Sergeant. Yes, we do, sir. Awfully good, sir, yes. It immediately occurred to me that uh, they could take over some of the paperwork and the making of tea and cocoa. Buttons? Yeah, I beg your pardon. <laughs> buttons, sir. They could sew on our buttons. Precisely, yes. It's a very good point. Thank you. My sister's very good at sewing, sir. Very point and all that sort of thing. Providing someone else will thread the needle. Well, thank you, Godfrey. But uh, I think perhaps we should... Concentrate on a rather younger age group. Excuse me, Mr. Manry. Right. There's a new girl at the sweet shop. She's very obliging. Ah, now that, uh, <laughs> That sounds more like the sort of girl we need. That's right. Comforts for the troops. Yeah. Don't listen. <laughs> Don't have any of that sort of talk, Walker. Look up, Manry. There's a lassie I know that works for the Gaslight and Coke Company. She's a sonsy, weight-bearing girl with a, a firm body and big, strong thighs. Money should see them. They, when you... Oh, they're very strong girls, Mr. Fraser. The ones with the big thighs. Yes, all right, just a minute. Look at my thighs. Now, I'm sure between us we can round up the right sort of material. Just bring them along with you to tomorrow's parade. Properly trained, they will release us, the front-line troops so that we can grapple with the enemy. I oh, don't suppose Taffy and Jonesy here will have much energy left after grappling with those big thighs. <laughs> oh, be quiet. <laughs> Listen to that, Wilson. <laughs> Sounds funny, hearing female voices out in the hall on parade night, doesn't it? Yes, it does, sir. It does rather, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> well, better have the first one in. All right, sir. Now, uh, who's first, please? Well, I think we are, Sergeant Wilson. Uh, this is Mrs. Fox. Oh, yes, 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 Mrs. Fox. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> I wonder if you'd be so kind as to come in. He thinks ever so. <laughs> what an awfully humid day it's been, hasn't it? Yes, hasn't it? <laughs> Still, you're, you're looking marvellously cool. <laughs> Wilson, do you sorry. mind if we carry on? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is Mrs. Fox. How do you do, Mrs. Fox? Nicely, thank you. Now, is there anything we can get you? Wilson, J just a minute. Yes, sir. I'd like a little word with you. Right. That is, if you can afford the time. Well, yeah. Of course, sir. Uh, you will excuse us, won't you, Mrs. Fox? You certainly thought it. Mm. What is it, sir? What is it? Mm. Look here, Wilson. I know you're something of a ladies' man. But these women are going to be subject to discipline like the rest of our force. Now, let's start if we mean to go on, shall we? Yes, well, surely we can be polite. I quite agree. Don't have to have all this Jack Buchanan stuff. <laughs> Just stick to the business in hand, if you don't mind. Yes, whatever you say, sir. Right. I'm sorry about that, Mrs. Fock. <clears throat> now, let's just take down some details. Name. Fox. Christian name. Morcia. Morcia. <laughs> what a very pretty name. Oh, do you, do you think so? Yes, I do indeed. It's one of my favourites. Wilson. <laughs> occupation, Mrs. Fox? We do. Oh. <laughs> Is that an occupation? Well, in Mrs. Fox's case, I would say it was almost a calling. Wilson, please. <laughs> oh, sorry, sir. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> now, Mrs. Fox, would you like to join us? Oh, yes, I'd love to. Good. 
Where are we going? <laughs> well, don't be good, Mrs. Marks. Don't be good. Didn't you think so, sir? Oh, yes, I did. I did. Highly comical. Thank you, Mrs. Fox. Jones, perhaps you take the lady back into the hall. Yeah, it'll be my pleasure to do that thing, sir. <laughs> this way, Mrs. Fox. Who's next, Wilson? Here we are. Ah, here. Pike. This is the young lady I was telling you about, sir. Ivy Samways, from the sweet shop. Ivy Samways. Yes, you remember, sir? She was the one who was very obliging. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, Wilson. Now, Miss Samways, what is your address? I beg your pardon? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm afraid I didn't quite catch that. Jutland Drive. Oh, Jutland Drive. Yes. What number? Pardon? <laughs> Twenty-seven. Who's that tone of voice to me, boy? <laughs> Twenty-seven. Hmm. Now, I wonder what sort of task would suit you best, Miss Samways. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. I, I, I missed that. What, what sort of a task? I think she said answering the telephone, sir. <laughs> well, I suppose we might consider that. On the other hand, of course, there may be some other little job which would make full use of your... of your... <laughs> of your natural talents. Thank you, Miss Tram... Miss Samways. That'll be all. Come along, Ivy. This way. <coughs> Private Walker, sir, has brought a young lady along, and uh, they're waiting. Shall I get them in? I hope it's better than that one. Yes, all right. Well, well, come on, Walker, come on. Oh, thanks, Sarge. Right. Hey, uh, uh, Mr. Mannering, this is uh, Edith Parrish. She's a friend of mine. I see. Good evening, Miss Parrish. Do you have an occupation? Yeah, I'm an usherette. That's right, a Tivoli cinema. You know, she flashes Yes, her... all, all right. Thank you. <laughs> well aware of what an usherette's duties are. Well, Miss Parrish, in your job, you, uh, you must see a lot of films. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I see a lot of other things than all. Y yeah, all right. <laughs> you needn't pursue that. Yeah. Any time you want to see a film, Mr. Marion, knock three times on a fire exit round the side alley, and Edith will fit you in. Yeah, thank you very much, Walker. I don't think I should be taking advantage of her hospitality. Now, Miss Parrish, where do you live? Down Berwick Road, 35. And I live with my daddy, six foot three, so you needn't get any ideas. <laughs> I think that will be all, Miss Parrish. Wait outside, please. Thanks, Mr. Mannerick. Come along, Edith. Here, you shouldn't have said that to him. Captain Mannerick never does get ideas. Oh, I don't think that's the right class of girl for us at all, Wilson. Oh, I quite agree, sir, yes. I wonder what's on at the Tivoli this week. I've no idea. <laughs> Are there any more ladies for us to see? No, I'm afraid not, sir, no. But, oh, by the way, I, I, I suppose there's no chance of us seeing uh, Mrs. Mannering on parade. No, 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 no. No, I shouldn't think so, Wilson. I did broach the subject last night in the shelter, but uh, Elizabeth didn't seem very keen on it. Ah. What about Mrs. Pike? Will she be joining us? I'm afraid not, sir. No, no. She gets tired so quickly these days, you see. She finds the nights awful strain. <laughs> Hardly gets any sleep at all. Really? <laughs> well, this won't win the war. Now, look, you pop out into the hall and get the ladies to organise some coffee. Mm -hmm. I just want to have a look through this new home guard manual for a few moments. All right, you are, sir. And when we've had our coffee, I think we'll initiate the ladies with a little drill. That's a good idea, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Ah, see what new ideas the boys in Whitehall thought up for us. Mm, that's very interesting. Come in. Captain Mannering. That's right. I'm sorry I'm a little late. I heard you were needing women helpers for the Home Guard. Is that right? Yes, yes, it's quite correct. D do come in. Thank you. Please sit down. You see, I've heard about this platoon since its very beginning. I think you're doing a wonderful job with it. Well, we must all try to do our best for old England in her hour of need. I'd love to help. Just to feel that I was doing something. Your face seems vaguely familiar. Have I seen you at the golf club? No. I've not been in Warmington long. I had to bring my mother away from London because of the bombing. I see. I'd love to have stayed. Not that there was much I could have done. But just being there would have shown that wretched little Hitler that we're not going to give in. By right, Joe, that's the sort of talk I like to hear. Now... What's the name? Gray. Gray. 
Christian name? Fiona. Fiona. Pretty name. Do you think so? Always has been one of my favorites. Thank you. <laughs> occupation? Well, widow, I suppose, if you can call that an occupation. Well, in your case, I would say it was almost a... Co oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I'll, I'll just put that down. Widow. What time do you normally hold your evening parades, Captain Mannering? Seven o'clock. Will that be convenient for you? Perfectly. I can't wait to start. At the moment, my life consists of morning coffee at Anne's pantry and making the dahlias grow. I'm very fond of dahlias. Really? Do you grow them too? No. Unfortunately. My wife says they attract earwigs. What a shame. But she's quite right. Captain Mannering, may I say something? Yes, of course. It's rather personal. That's all right. Do you always wear spectacles? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I do. Would you take them off for a moment? Yes, if you wish. There. Oh, that's so much better. I always think they act as a sort of... Well, they cut off the warmth in a person's eyes. Just as a fire guard takes away so much of the heat. <laughs> I suppose you're right, huh? I never thought of it that way. Uh, the men are ready to... Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Big upon, sir. I, I didn't know you had anybody with you. It's all right. Sergeant Wilson, this is a new recruit. This is Fiona Gray. Oh, Fiona. What an awfully pretty name. Yes, sorry. Well, we've, we've, taken, we've taken all the details down regarding Mrs. Gray, so... As you were about to say, Wilson... Yes. We'd better carry on with the parade. Right, sir, yes, sir. Well, if you'd like to go to the kitchen, Mrs. Gray, I'm sure somebody could find you a quick cup of coffee. And I'll, uh... We'll... See you on parade in a moment or two. Thank you so much. What a charming woman, Wilson. Yes. Yes, well, we'd better carry on. Now, I thought... Excuse that... me, sir. Uh, 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 have you, um... Have you broken your glasses? What? Hmm? The glasses. Oh. oh, no, no. Oh. No, I, uh... No, I just left them off for a moment. Uh-huh. Eyes a little tired, you know. I'll put them back on now. Yes. I see, sir, yes. That's right. <coughs> well, after you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Right. right. Two, ten, shut. Uh, excuse me, Captain Manning. Mm. Uh, this young lassie with me is Miss Ironsides. Uh, she's the young lady I mentioned to you. The one who works in the Gaslight and Coke Company. She's only just arrived, I'm afraid. I see. Uh, will it be all right, sir, if she joins in now and you can take her particulars down after the parade? <laughs> yes, yes, very well, Fraser. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies. On this, your first parade. Yeah, Mr. Fraser, I don't think that girl of yours has got big thighs. Long ones, maybe. What's the matter with your eyes, man? They're like three trunks. Softer, mind you, softer, oh, but... Hey. In the rank. <laughs> now, ladies, for a start, we'll teach you just the rudiments of foot drill. Now, first of all, the at-ease position. The legs should be comfortably apart, about 18 inches or so. Hands are placed right over left, just over your... over your... Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, behind, uh, the back. <laughs> Would you like to try that? Yes. Very good. Now, to come to attention, you raise your left foot and place it beside your right foot. Like so. Now, now comes the tricky bit. At the same time, you bring your hands to your sides with thumbs in line with the seams of your trousers. Permission to speak, sir. Mm. These ladies are not wearing trousers, sir. <laughs> <laughs> see them being ladies, you see, sir. Yes. Well, they can put their thumbs in line with the seams of their knickers. Yeah, look, look. <laughs> Any more from you, Walker, and you'll be sent home. Blimey, it was only a joke. If he wasn't wearing no knickers, he'd have something to go on about. <laughs> right, now pay attention. We'll try that. Squad, stand at ease. Not bad, not bad at all. Come on, honey. Miss Ironsides here is doing it very well, very well. <laughs> Man, her legs are going together with a very firm, strong action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at them, sir. All right. <laughs> all right, Fraser. <laughs> Now let's, uh, now let's move on to the left and right turn. Now to right turn, you swivel on the right heel and left toe. You do this in two distinct steps. Thus. One, two, one, two. Take your partners for the military two-step. Get Walker. <laughs> Can't tell you again. Now, ladies, brace the rear thigh hard as you go round. Ah, that's right, Miss Ironsides. Do as the gun says. <laughs> Those thighs are yours that have been braced firm and strong. Here, let me show you, lassie. <laughs> <laughs> I've 
second childhood or something. <laughs> now, you lift the rear leg high and place it beside the front one. Blimey, what a way to win a war. <laughs> I think, young lady, you will find that the captain knows best. Why don't you listen to him? Godfrey. Uh, yes, Captain Manor? Look to your front and stop talking to the ladies. Woman mad, that's what he is, woman mad. <laughs> Walker, this is your last chance. I won't warn you again. Right, now once more. Squat, squat, hand! Very good, Mrs. Gray, very good. Squat, left, turn. Oh, dear. <laughs> there seems to be an element of confusion, sir, as to which is their left and which is their right. Yes, that does indeed. Mr. Speaker, sir, they had the same trouble, sir, during the American Civil War. You know, when they had all sorts of crude, rough country yokel men as soldiers, and they didn't know their left foot from their elbows, you know, sir. So to overcome this, ingeniously, they tied a piece of hay to one foot and a piece of straw to the other. And when they wanted to turn left, the commanding man said, Hay turn! Or straw turn! According to whether the hay was on the left foot or the straw was on the left foot. <laughs> Mind you, they had to be very careful to get straws on all the left feet or A, as the case may be. Do you think that'd help at all, sir? <laughs> Not really, Jones. <laughs> Strikes me as being slightly unorthodox. Well, I think it's a very good idea, sir. I mean, after all, you could then come in of an evening and say, Good evening, ladies. What nice drawers you're wearing. <laughs> That's it. You've gone too far. Go home. Oh, I didn't say anything. I'm not arguing. It's an order. Go home. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Oh, good morning. Just for one, is it, sir? Yes, please. Would you like to sit anywhere particular, sir? Near the window, for instance? Oh, I'm not fussy. I haven't been in here for some time, so I, I don't have any favourite spots. I, I like somewhere quiet. Right, sir. How about this corner, sir? Yes, it'll be fine. What can I get you? Oh, just a cup of coffee, please. Right, sir, won't be a moment. Oh, good morning, madam. Where would you like to say it? Oh, I don't really mind it. No, it's all right. I've seen somebody I know. Good morning, Mr. Mannering. Oh, Mrs. Gray. What a surprise. Won't you join me? Thank you. I haven't seen you here before. Oh, I come here from time to time, you know, when I can get my nose away from the grindstone. What can I get you, madam? Oh, just coffee as usual, please. On your bill, sir, or separate? Uh, separate, please. Oh, no, please. Have it on me. <laughs> On my bill, please. Very good, sir. <laughs> I notice you're not wearing your glasses, Mr. Mannering. Ah, I thought I'd try leaving the glasses off temporarily. Not even sure that I really need them. Uh, oh, good morning, Kathy Mannering. Oh, good morning, Godfrey. Godfrey? It is Godfrey, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, that's right. I haven't seen you in here before, sir. Oh, I pop in from time to time, you know. Well, I'm just on my way to the clinic. Have you broken your glasses, Mr. Mannering? No, no, I'm just giving my eyes a little rest. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, uh, I must be off. Uh, goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Godfrey. Charming man, Mrs. Gray. Mm. One of my most loyal soldiers. Had a bit of bladder trouble from time to time, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> They're a wonderful <laughs> band of men. <laughs> yes, I'm very proud of them. Hello, Captain Mannering. Oh, hello. Walk up. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen you in here before. Well, I come in from time to time. Here, if you bust your specs, I know a bloke that's got 500 frames, hardly used. No, I haven't broken them, thank you. Well, if anyone asks, you haven't seen me, all right? I'm just delivering a bit of the sweet stuff. Oh, Sorry. you mean you mean sugar? Shh. You haven't seen me, OK? All right, Walker. I think I can fairly truthfully say that I haven't seen you. <laughs> Cheerio, then. Heart of gold, that man. <laughs> do, you for, uh, do anything for you. <laughs> Sorry about all these interruptions, Mrs. Gray. I must say, I was looking forward to a nice cup of coffee and a quiet chat. So was I. I have to confess that I came here quite deliberately on the chance that you'd be here. I'd rather hoped you might. Excuse me, Captain Mary. Yeah, oh, what is it? <laughs> what is it, Pike? I've been looking all over for you. You don't usually come in here, do you? <laughs> Still, it's nice to have a change and get away quietly on your own, isn't it? What exactly do you want, Pike? Oh, oh, yes, yes, I, I nearly forgot. Um... Mr. Wilson says, can you come straight away, because the bank inspectors are here. Yes, all right, Pike. Tell Mr. Wilson I'm coming. Very good, Mr. Manry. 
I'm sorry about this, Mrs. Gray. Now, let's meet again very soon. And might I suggest next time somewhere else? I'd like that. I shall see you tonight, anyway, on parade. Yes, of course. I look forward to it. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, has a gentleman gone? Yes, he has. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I've got two coffees here, and the gentleman hasn't paid for them. That'll be four pence. <laughs> I tell you, Jonesy, you're my knowledge making a knot of full arm soldiers. No other way of putting it. Yes, Jock, you may be right. They have coffee every morning together. I've not seen them there recently. No, they go to the Dutch oven now. I have to go and get him if there's anything important. Folly, sheer folly. I, I think somebody should tell him that the whole platoon knows about the two of them. Well, what can we do about it? Well, I'd we word with the sergeant last night. Maybe he'll say something to the old fool. Look out, look at Sergeant Wilson now. He's oh. just going into the office. Perhaps he's going to tackle him tonight. Oh, yes, sir. I'd like to be a wee fly on the wall. Ah, <laughs> oh, Wilson. About time for parade, isn't it? Uh, I've rather an important announcement to make tonight concerning the ladies' section. Oh, yes, sir, yes, the ladies' section, yes. I did rather want to talk to you about that at some time. Oh, yes? Yeah, well, you see, I, I know it's none of my business, but if, if I don't say something, well, uh, I mean, well, who will? Wilson. Uh, if you have something to say, stop shuffling from one foot to the other and cough it up. You're in some sort of trouble. Oh, good Lord, no, sir. It's just that... Uh, with the ladies' section, do you think that it's just possible that some of us are making tiny little fools of ourselves? Ah, I see. Well, I'm not insensitive to what people have been saying. So I've decided to dismiss the female section and just hang on to one or two special helpers. I see, sir, yes. So that should stop Mrs. Pike nagging you when you go around there for supper. You know, Wilson, you should keep well away from jealous women. Yes, but you see, you don't understand. Oh, yes, I do. You're not the only person to have had his heart strings plucked. <laughs> Come along, I'll make the announcement. <laughs> right, pay attention, everyone. Robert Jones, everybody here? Yes, sir, everyone present, sir. That is except Mrs. Gray. Mrs. Gray not here? No, sir. How strange. Perhaps she's a little under the weather. Favoritism. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen, but Ivy here says she thinks Mrs. Gray's all right. Says she must be. Because she saw her carrying two big heavy suitcases to the station. The station? Yeah, Ivy says it was about ten minutes ago. Well, it's only one train at this time of the evening. The 8.40 to London. Wilson, take the parade. All right, sir. Do you want me to make the announcement? Good Lord, he's gone. Excuse me. Can I get through, please? Hey, Stiddy, on who do you think you're shopping? <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. I've got to get through. Ah, oh, she is. Mrs. Gray! Field up! Oh, hello, George. <laughs> what? What are you doing? What's happened? Nothing's happened, George. I'm just going back to London, that's all. But why? You never mentioned this. You, you never even hinted. I just thought it would be for the best. For both of us. But I don't want you to go. My whole life is completely different now. I just live from one meeting to the next. I know. I'm just the same. Why does it have to be like this? It's the only thing to do. People are talking. Oh, people always talk. Who cares about that? What about your wife? <laughs> There's no fear of them talking to her. <laughs> she hasn't been outside the front door since Munich. <laughs> oh, George, be sensible. You can't afford to have scandal and tittle-tattle. Victoria Train! Victoria Train! I don't care what people say. You've got to think of your position and the bank. Oh, damn the bloody bank. George! I'm sorry, but you mustn't take that train. George, I've got to. It's the only sensible thing to do. Warming to our seat! Warming to our seat! Victoria Train! Fiona, I implore you, don't take that train. Look, look, we'll only see each other once a week. Please, George. You're making this awfully difficult for me. I've made up my mind. It's the only way. Here, let me help you. Thank you, George. Please, Fiona. I've never begged anyone for anything in my life. But I'm begging you not to go. I'm sorry, George. Hurry along, please. Hurry along. Better get out, George, or you'll be coming to London, too. If only I could. Close the doors, please. Close the doors. Close that door, please, sir. What? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. 
How will I get in touch with you? You won't be able to. To write, won't you? Maybe, after a while. I don't know. Please promise me you'll write. Very well. I'll write. Oh, Fiona. Dear Joe. Please, please make it soon. I'll try, George. I'll try. Goodbye, George. And thank you. Goodbye, Fiona. episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Carmen Silvera, Mrs. Gray, Maurice Sugden, Mrs. Fox and the Waitress, and Wendy Richard as Edith Parrish. Mum's Army was adapted for radio by Harold Snowden and Michael Knowles, and produced by John Dials. <laughs>